uh, we have earned some knowledge about Lean Six Sigma in our training or from a textbook. However, the bigger question is, how can we apply the Lean Six Sigma knowledge into practice? Good morning, everyone. My name is Li Mai. I am from the Lean Six Sigma Academy. Today, I have, I'm very honored to have Mr. Edwin Keepers with us. Hi, Edwin. Good morning. Good morning, Li Mai. Good morning. Welcome. Edwin Thank is you. the business improvement consultant of Symbol Baby. At the same time, he is also the coach and head of Academy of Dutch Handball Federation. Being an experienced Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, Edwin has helped many clients in terms of business process improvement. So today, Edwin and I will just going to have, have a conversation about how he has applied the Lean Six Sigma knowledge into practice. So Edwin, I have a few questions for you. That's okay. But could you please tell us how did you get first get involved with the Lean Six Sigma? Was it by design or by accident? Um, it's actually a little bit of both because what happened in uh, I, when I was uh, uh, working about 25 years ago in uh, in consultancy, uh, we always talked about operational excellence and. Um, without really knowing what operational excellence was. It was more like, okay, we want to improve processes uh, and get better results for our for our customers as, uh, as such. And uh, what happened in, in that time, uh, we were starting to talk about lean. So that was mm -hmm. the first. So Toyota came across with, uh, with a lot of information on the Toyota production system. Um, yep. And at the same time, it also started a little bit uh, going off with, uh, with Six Sigma. So in those days, it was still lean or Six Sigma, mm -hmm. uh, where later on it was more like a combined uh, uh, approach. Um, so yeah, basically I came across it uh, to it uh, just by by accident, but but eventually uh, we designed, let's say, the, the the whole training and all the education. So how we could use the tools and apply the techniques. Um, that was that was more or less a, a real design. So it was uh, okay. we developed ourselves. So I became uh, first of all black belt, and later on master black belt, and this is how it actually uh, actually started. Okay, so uh, when you were an, a consultant, you, you also combined the lean and the six sigma together. So not only lean or six sigma, but the combination. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. From you know, as you just mentioned, you have designed the training. And it's, I, think, I think that's the way how you became an expert in the field. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And so if I may ask, how long have you been working as a Lean Six Sigma or business improvement consultant? How many years already? I've been, I've been in this business for more than 25 years now. And wow. uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. It's uh, but yeah. a lot. And I think I really like it because you see a lot of uh, different type of businesses, different type of clients opportunities and also had a different project. So that makes it makes a lot of fun uh, because what I think from uh, working in, in, in improvement process, improvement, business improvement, it's uh, every day is different. So that makes my life uh, very challenging. Um, and I think uh, yeah, there's still a lot of opportunities to go. Um, mm -hmm. so that ma it makes also sure that uh, in the future we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> and uh, just, I'm just curious for what kind of clients did you help? Many clients from the manufacturer or from the public service sector? Yeah, initially it was uh, a lot in the manufacturing area. I, for example, I did a, did a big job with uh, with Shell in the in the UK oil uh, oil and gas uh, sector. Um, yeah. yeah, that was that was where where we really started with with some lean stuff, uh, getting also some data driven uh, approach, uh, to trying to apply some of the of the Six Sigma tools. But later it became more uh, also in the in the, in the in the service area. So I did a lot of uh, uh, things with governments, uh, also with uh, with municipals and uh, and and also even with hospitals. So there's a lot of uh, different approaches. Uh, oh, sorry, not different approach, same approach to different type of businesses. And, okay. Uh, yeah. If I may ask, because you have helped clients from different kind of sectors, like Shell, really big manufacturing company, and also like hospital. Uh, those those kind of institution. So my question is, if you want to compare those two kind of branches, what is, what is the most uh, how you call it, significant difference? You can say. I, I, to be fairly honest, there is no difference here eh, because okay. uh, we all work with customers, we yeah. all work with the process, 
Yeah. And we also like to deliver our service or our product as 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 good as possible to our customers. And okay. Of course, it's different when you're in a hospital and you have to do a surgery, have to do surgery on someone, which is a different kind of service than when you go to, uh, let's say, um, to a, 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 a company like Shell where they deliver oil and gas. Yeah. Of course, that's completely different. But for me, it's quite important, and that's what's also quite important for me as as a lean six sigma master black belt is that you start to think in a process. And if yeah. you have a process, there's always an input, there's always an output, um, and and that's not different for, for what type of business you you are talking about. Yeah, to sum up a little bit, I think that is also the message we are trying to send out from our academy is that they this uh, you know methodology of lean six sigma. It's not only limited to manufacturing companies, but also for public service sector. I think that's again from what we heard from Ethan. It's he just uh, confirmed that is indeed the case. Um, you just mentioned the big project we did in Shell. Yeah. Was that one really special for you? Was that the most uh, like significant project you have done? No, this is this. It's one of the. Uh, it was one of the first projects I did uh, applying the Lean Six Sigma uh, tools and techniques. One of the uh, other clients that I worked with was a was a was a company that made catalysts for the chemical industry, okay. and what we basically did is that we uh, um, you know, streamlined their whole supply chain by applying Lean Six Sigma methodology. Oh uh, wow! And that was very interesting because we were able to help them uh, further further increase uh, uh, their profits and and further expand their business. Uh, uh -huh by just simply looking at, at uh, how effective is the current way of working and what should we do differently. And by, again, applying processes, tools and techniques and things like that uh, in order to identify, okay, where is the real yeah, mm -hmm. bot button we have to have to turn on uh, to make sure we do the things we, uh, we are looking for. Okay, I'm just, uh, if I may ask, I just want to know, for instance, for such a big project, what kind of hard benefits are you talking about? You talk about a couple of millions. Euros. Euros, okay. yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. to that, we still have like soft benefits. People more work more efficiently, for yeah. instance. I think yeah. I think the soft ones are, are sometimes even even uh, bigger than than the hard benefits. But but it's very difficult, of course, to quantify. But but for, if you talk about uh, most companies, talk about motivation, and uh, yeah. I find that very difficult to uh, to quantify that. Um, but it's definitely also worthwhile uh, the involvement of people that you get when you start to look at the, at, at the, the processes uh, in line with the Lean Six Sigma methodology. Uh, it's also it's it's you can it's undescribable. It's like it's almost uh, uh, impossible to quantify. But it it gives you an, an additional boost to the uh, to the organization. Yeah. Yes, indeed, indeed. Like Lean Six Sigma is not only about the you know the hard side, uh, like like those tools and skills. But also the soft side, it's about people. You know, after all, people have to do the job. Yeah. Uh, well, you have, ex you have explained to us many things you have done. If I may ask, what are the most important lessons you have learned from those projects? Can you share that with us, please? Yeah, of course. For me, there's a couple of things that are quite important. First of all, is to make sure you get a proper, uh, if we, we do it in the DMAIEC, Mm -hmm. Your define phase is really important. Make sure you get a clear definition of what you are going to do, yeah. and what are you going to deliver, um, and also in what time frame you are going to deliver it. Um, okay, clear definition of the problem. We have first yeah. identified the problem, then we can find a solution, and also the time frame. Okay, further anything else? Yeah, and I think I think key to it is also that you have a have a proper team, yeah? that you make sure you get people involved that are in the day to day business. They understand yeah. what is going on. They understand the methodology, um, and they can help you with that. Um, okay. And those are really also really important when you have to think at the at the other side is when you have finished the project, and mm -hmm. when you have to make sure that the things that you've been changing or improving that those are getting sustainable in the organization. Because the yes. people that are on your project are key yeah. for getting the sustainability. Yes, I understand. Just to summarize a little bit what, what Edna has just told us, the most important lessons that he has learned is, for instance, a clear definition of the problem, because we can only define the problem and then find a solution. And second of all is the time frame of a project. 
A third also he has emphasized is very, very important is the people, because after all, people have to do the job. And also the fourth thing is like sustainability. Maybe you have improved the project for now, but we hope to see the improvement still, I don't know, in five years or 10 years time frame. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for so far. And now we're going to enter your another role, which we have mentioned you're the coach and also the head of the Academy of the Dutch Handball Federation. Um, when and why did you decide to become a handball coach? Uh, actually, it was not on purpose. It was like uh, I always played handball myself. And uh, um, at a certain moment in time, the, the team I was playing for, it uh, didn't have a trainer. And then <laughs> someone said, hey, maybe it's good. it's a good opportunity for you. And I had okay. to think about it initially and I thought, okay, is this something for me? Because I always said, okay, I don't want to become the trainer. I just want to be a, play become, want to be a player. Um, but I, I started doing it and, and why I did it, I got a lot of fun, and a lot of uh, um, excitement about it. And, um, and the more I did it and, and the longer I did it, the more I, I also had the feeling that I was quite good at it. So, uh, um, and that had definitely helped me to say, okay, hey, let's see if uh, there are more opportunities just then mm -hmm. doing my, my local team. And uh, so I, I was also asked by the Federation to become a, a national trainer, a national okay. team trainer. And, uh, and that of course helped, helps you to say, okay, hey, now maybe it's time to do some, to make some other choices as well. Okay, so uh, the level you're now coaching is really the national team. So yes. I'm not really good at handball, I'm sorry. It's more like the highest level in Holland, I think, right? It's the highest level in Holland and, and also uh, we play at the European level. So it's like uh, okay. you, play, you work with the best in, the, in, in, in Europe. So that's, uh, that's wow. very interesting. Yeah. And you know, you were a player yourself when you were younger and now you're the coach. What is the difference? How you feel in your role and being a player and being a coach? Do you see the difference actually? Oh ah, yeah, there's a lot of difference. I think if, as a coach, it's it's really important to make sure your players are getting the best out of themselves, out of themselves, yeah. uh, which is completely different than when you're a player because then you say, okay, I'm just taking care of myself and nobody else. So yeah. now you have to take care of uh, of 16 players instead of just one, and that um, means you have to develop them, um, you have to motivate them, um, also you have to guide them as well. Um, and you have to make sure that they're able to, uh, because uh, handball is a game, it's really about decision making, that they are basically able to make the right decisions in, on the court. Okay, because um, as we know your experience in Lean Six Sigma, now you're the coach. Is there any kind of camp connection between these two roles of you? Uh, there, is, there is, because what I always like is the combination, eh? because we can learn from, from uh, if you look at a sports team, um, uh, how to develop a team is, is really something that, that's been done greatly in, and very well in, in the sports area. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's something where you can learn a lot from uh, 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 when you're in day-to-day -day business, uh, because yeah. we work also in, a lot in teams, uh, but we don't pay attention enough, I would say, to develop people in such a way that they, are can, that they can excel. Uh, but the other way around is also that we have sometimes some, some very nice and interesting methodologies uh, in order to, uh, for example, develop your strategy. I did uh, recently, I did a hosting planning session with a customer. Oh, okay. And uh, this and is also ones, typically. Sorry, Katrin, for the ones who doesn't know hosting, can I explain shortly what a hosting is? It's actually, it's, it's hosting is actually, uh, it's, hosting is the Japanese word for compass and uh, it's, it's helping you to give direction to whatever you want to do. Uh, okay. But it's, it's a very, interesting approach where you start from vision all the way down to uh, actions on on the day-to-day -day business okay uh, so it's it's helping you to develop your strategy and 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 that's a very interesting one this is something that's been done on to, on a daily basis almost uh, or not on a daily basis but on a regular basis in, in in normal business but in sports it's like okay hey we always think about vision uh, but we are very, it's some, find it very sometimes very difficult to translate a vision into actions. Yes, so I know that. In that. And in that way, I also combine the two again because I can learn from what is happening on the other side, and mm -hmm. and the other way around, of course. So it's uh, that makes it very interesting. And you have mentioned the ocean. Are there any other links, six different principles that you also use? Like I don't know, brainstorm. <laughs> Do you use that? Uh, brainstorm, of course. But for me, one of the key things is that is data. If you look data. at uh, oh, 
Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <please. laughs> if you look at at the current, and it's, I think it's it's valid for a lot of sports. Uh, uh, sports is is currently a lot of it is data driven. Mm. And if you look at at our trainings, we collect a lot of information about the players heart rates uh, speed uh, distance all kind of things that they uh, that are measured during during the training and during the game uh, and what we what we do so we have a lot of information or we have a lot of data but not all data is always information so we have to translate that into information that means we can apply a lot of statistics and okay. we are currently, currently one of the things we are doing is that uh, um, handball is a very physical game um so there's a lot of injuries so uh -huh. we actually started a kind of lean six sigma project on how to reduce the number of injuries oh, so wow. we're basically applying the same methodology uh, dmaic collecting data defining the problem collecting data and analyzing the data and in order to basically improve the process Wow, that sounds very interesting to be honest i even didn't know that you can you could apply those techniques also in sport yeah. yeah yeah well and, thank this, you for and this is only a small part eh? because if you look at it uh, um, as i said a lot of it is data driven nowadays and uh, that means you also need statistics in that so we for example we monitor our players uh day to day um, uh -huh. and we're also looking at uh, and we do a data analysis to see okay are we having a positive trend are we having a negative trend um, and, and and statistics is is almost yeah key of our day to day business as well. And are you doing all this analysis yourself? Oh no no. Luckily, luckily I have some people that are uh, that are very good at it. Uh, but I also have the 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 luck that with my background, um, I can also help them and say okay maybe it's good to look at this or maybe we should do it like that. Um, so I can help them to to guide them in the in the right direction. So that's that's also good I think. Okay, yeah, that's just part of your role as a coach, I think. You just yeah, tell them absolutely. the direction to go. Yeah. Uh, well, my last question is like, uh, do you have any tips for young professionals who may be interested in becoming a business improvement, uh, I don't know, consultant? Do you have any tips for them? I, I, first of all, I would recommend to every young professional to become a business improvement uh, uh, manager, consultant, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Because I think by doing it, you get the opportunity to see, see so many different businesses and so many yeah. different processes. Um, and that will help you to develop as an individual, but also help you to develop uh, for your future career, I would say. Uh, yeah. Because um, um, to me, it's very important that you just are not linked to one uh let's say type of process that you are, are able to look at at every type of business uh not in a general way but but you have the, the kind of approach in your in your mind that you say hey i'm going to use this and i'm going to do it in order to improve uh, the business as such and okay, the other so, thing yeah well, the other thing is that um, um i'm a back by background i'm a chemical engineer a process engineer and what i've always learned from day one when i started studying is that you have to think in processes okay. uh, so if that's a skill that you cannot apply yet make sure you get that skill as fast as possible because by mapping and by being able to 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 uh to think in the think in processes you can also um, uh, identify not, i won't say very easily but you are able to identify sometimes in a very fast way where is the bottleneck in this organization so just to summarize a little bit a link six sigma is more like a mindset is that correct yeah. it's more like a mindset the way how you look at problems the way how you look at a chance for improvement in your business it doesn't matter which kind of business you're in manufacturing or or public service sector if you like young professionals if you have this mindset you will be able to identify the bottleneck or cause or root cause. Then you can bring some kind of solution for improvement. Yeah, yeah that's well, great. Thank you so much for sharing so many interesting stories. Also in your role as a business improvement consultant, but also as the coach of the Dutch uh, handful team. Thank you so much for your time. And You're welcome. Um, yeah, thank you. And, uh, and for the ones who want to know more about Lean Six Sigma, for want to know more how we can help you in your 
business improvements, please reach out to us via www.lsa.eu. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.